literally be alive here on the earth and see his second coming. He'll have them protected at that time, but they're going to be literally here still on the earth. And they will watch the, the coming of the second coming of Christ. Uh, and these will be separated from all the other evil and wicked people that are left alive on the earth at that time. And so his people will be allowed to enter into the millennial uh, 1,000 year reign with him. Uh, where the others are sent off into judgment. And I know a lot of people that don't believe in a literal 1,000 year reign. The Lord will reign here on earth. And, and I've gone back and forth on that myself, but I can't find anything that negates it. I can't find any argument that makes any sense that negates it. You know, you have your pre-millennialists and your post-millennialists and all these different categories uh, that people put all the different groups in. Uh, but I can't find anything that negates a literal reign of a thousand years uh, because there's too many other things that you have to put into perspective when you start to negate or th and throw out certain scriptures just to go along with a certain theory or doctrine. We know the Lucifer has his, th his three attempts, his three rebellions, and his last one comes up at the end of this thousand year millennial reign. We know he's he's tied up and cast into the, bot uh, the bottomless uh, pit, which is the abyss, for a thousand years, while the Antichrist and the false prophet are cast into the lake of fire. And so, uh, there's definitely a long time period, if, even if the thousand years is a literal thousand years or not, there's definitely a long time period to where uh, everything on earth is ended here, uh, the Battle of Armageddon's occurred. The, the Chinese armies are all destroyed. The New World Order is destroyed. The, the um, you know the American and European and all the armies that were supporting the New, New World Order they're all destroyed. The Antichrist, the false prophet, are cast into the lake of fire, uh, and Satan's tied up. And then all the uh, the evil will be removed off of the face of the earth, and we go into a 1,000 year millennial reign. And so that's where I think it's going to be interesting is is right then is when the evil are removed off the face of the earth and the Lord says mankind will be the ones doing that and we also know that the angels will be doing that um, and then we move into the 1,000 years where uh, David is set up as king who rules from Jerusalem so that would be interesting um, I hear from people all the time I know what we're going to be doing during that 1,000 years and that goes along with a lot of um, the judgment seat of Christ believers face when they die and go to heaven and, and they face the Lord's judgment it's not a judgment of punishment but a ju uh, but a, an awards judgment and of course uh, where his people are rewarded for service here on earth now and, and the awards you receive for your service here on earth now during your lives when you were on earth uh, will determine what you're doing during the millennial reign what you're doing during eternity uh, your kind of rank among the Lord's people, the Lord's kingdom, things that you'll be doing. So I find that interesting. You know, after the war of Armageddon and the Lord's return, everything made by man is pretty much destroyed. You know, the Bible says the earth and sky are passed away, they're destroyed. Uh, and the New Jerusalem comes down and is the home of uh, Yahushua's bride and his people. And the... Uh, the people, the sheep that are placed on his right hand in Matthew 25, 33 are allowed to live on earth during the time and rebuild it. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, New Jerusalem because I know that the, um, I have a website, uh, crystalcityfraud.com. And what this is, is it's the New Age's attempt and their plans to mimic a New Jerusalem because they know what Bible prophecy is. And they're doing everything to mimic it, to go alongside and mimic it. They're going to have this, this, this Ananda come, who plays Jesus, which is just general, Satan's general. He goes by the name of Jesus, and, and that's why I keep telling you the Son of God's name is Yeshua. It's not Jesus, call him by his real name. Uh, because Jesus is literally Satan's general, one of his people, one of his ascended masters coming to fulfill the role of the, the, the false prophet. Uh, and they're going to they're gonna mimic things as much as possible. They're going to come in the sky with UFOs. These angels, these, these humanoid, uh, the, um, the Annex, the Anunnaki, look very uh, angelic because they're very tall, very big beings. And they're going to wear the white robes and they're going to try to have this angelic glow to them. And they're going to try to fool the earth and have their own when they come to earth, the Sananda and um, 
he's going to play that he's he's really Jesus, the Son of God, and, and show these fake nail holes in his hands, and they're going to try to mimic everything. And they even go as far as trying to mimic a new Jerusalem. Um, I don't know if they're just going to have this huge UFO type thing. I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, various things on my website, crystalcityfraud.com, various ways they can try to pull this off. To deceive, to deceive mankind into, into accepting them as uh, angelic and, and, and ascended masters and heavenly beings. And so, uh, what they're going to say is uh, one of the ways of getting people to accept the mark uh, of the beast, the mark of the, uh, in their right hand or forehead, is to tell them they can have a tour of their Jerusalem. You can see this thing hovering in the sky, this Hollywood production thing they built. <laughs> to mimic the, the, the real Jer- New Jerusalem and get people to, to receive the, the mark of the beast in, in order to join the kingdom of God on earth and they're going to come up with all these different lies and different uh, things and so a lot of people are going to get fooled by that talk about this New Jerusalem because you can read about it in Revelation chapter 21 let's see uh, Revelation 21 and I saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven Scripture describes this New Jerusalem as a literal city made of real material with precise dimensions. Jerusalem is the city that God loves the most above all others, will be his capital city, and all the saints will dwell in it with him, according to Isaiah 2, 2 2-4. Throughout mankind's history, God has been in heaven while man has inhabited earth, but in the New Jerusalem, God will dwell with man. It will be God's home with his saints. When Jesus was in Yahushua, was here, he didn't have a place to lay his head. But in the New Jerusalem, he will be, it will be his home created for us, and we will be with him. It will come down from heaven and be a city of great magnitude. Now, the saints who inhabit this city will have glorified bodies capable of transcending space and devouring distances in a fraction of a second. There will be no need for any type or system of transportation because we will be able to transport ourselves more easily and efficiently than a mode of material transportation. Uh, the location of the city is not specifically given, but the vision John had indicates that this new Jerusalem comes down close to the earth, but he never says that it actually sits or directly rests on the earth. It is spoken of as the Jerusalem which is above. The nations of the earth will walk in its light, which implies that this city is above them, in Isaiah 2.2. 2. And so what I find interesting about this new Jerusalem, um, well, I'll get into the dimensions first, uh, is because it's, it's kind of going to replace the existing sun that we have now, If you look at the sun now, every person on earth walks in the light of the sun. Every nation on earth now walks in the light of the sun. And when this new Jerusalem comes, uh, the former earth has been passed away. uh, The the, the sun and moon and all that has been passed away. We have this new Jerusalem where where God uh, is going to live with man. So it's kind of interesting because it's going to hover over the earth like the sun does now. People are going to walk in the light of it like we do now. Uh, only at that time, uh, it's, it's not burning people. You don't get a sunburn from the New Jerusalem. Uh, and there's actually uh, 12 levels. I'm going to read the description of the city this, this, this new sun actually is. So it's pretty wild. You know, John described the city in uh, was it Revelation 21 and 22. Having the glory of God, her light was like unto a stone, most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as a crystal, And it had a great wall and high, had twelve gates, and the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them them, the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Notice twelve apostles of the Lamb, not (laughs) thirteen. It's me always trying to sneak Paul in there, he wasn't an apostle. Judas was replaced by uh, Matthias. It was not replaced by Paul. Paul was a counterfeit. But anyway, we go back to this. The names of the twelve apostles 